And now, this week it was announced that a controversial new treatment for vitiligo might soon be offered on the NHS. Vitiligo is a condition where pale white patches develop on the skin. Model Winnie Harlow is one of the most high-profile people with the condition, which is caused by a lack of melanin, which is a pigment in skin. The new treatment can restore pigment to the skin and is being hailed by some as a miracle cream. However, others question whether vitiligo should be celebrated rather than masked or uh, corrected. To examine both sides of this discussion, I'm joined by Jyoti Gataora, author and campaigner, and Shankar uh, Jalota from the charity Changing Faces. Good to see you both. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Jyoti, uh, can you explain how uh, vitiligo has affected your life? Yes, um, I was diagnosed at a tender age of 21. Um, I was a very confident teenager, enjoying life uh, at university, and suddenly I found a white patch on my left arm, which completely destroyed me. Um, it um, really brought down my self-esteem, um, and I was left feeling terribly isolated. So, so it, it was a patch that just appeared to start with, and then it spread? Just appeared on the left arm, tiny little spots, and then it started spreading quite rapidly. And have you tried any, or had you tried any treatments up until now? Um, over the last 10 years, 10 to 15 years, I tried a variety of different treatments. Um, there, was, there is one um, on offer at the, uh, with the NHS, a Poover treatment, uh, which I tried for a couple of years. Um, but that was unsuccessful. Um, I also tried some Chinese and Indian remedies as well, but unfortunately neither of those worked. So, so how did it feel and, and how does it sort of make you feel when you're you know, at work or in public? Um, you know, you're talking about it affecting your life. Just, just give us a taste of it. Extremely that. difficult. I mean, I covered up my skin for many, many years. I am a teacher, um, so I did cover up my skin H with how? my students. How? Um, I, oh, I used it, to wear cover up makeup. Right. Cover up makeup I used to take you know, several hours to cover up my skin, um, and it was extremely difficult to sort of carry out that carry out that process on a day to day basis. Mm. Shankar, does that sound like a familiar story to you? Yes, uh, I think actually it sounds like many familiar vitiligo stories that you hear out there. Um, I got vitiligo at the age of 15 years old and it started off as a small speck just on my chest and under my eye and then it fully developed over, over years to come. Um, but how I actually embraced my vitiligo was by pure accident. Um, I, I, like JT, I wore makeup as well, which is actually I felt it's hard enough to wear makeup as a guy at the time, especially not seeing others out there that do wear makeup. But I did and one day I forgot my, I was staying at a friend's house, I forgot my makeup at home and I was left with a choice whether to go into work as I was without my makeup with my bit of like on show or to stay at home calling sick and be like, no, no, it's not for me. But I'm so fortunate and happy to say that that day defined my life. I didn't wear my makeup, I went into work and it completely changed my life. Wow, so, so a mistake led to you then exactly that. A, a being empowered. Mistake. Yeah. It, it brought me here. It brought me here. And, and so that's today. a really interesting story. And I mentioned uh, Winnie Harlow, the, the model, who obviously this, that's a really distinctive look that she has because of vitiligo. Should we be celebrating the way we look and the way we look differently? And I, I'm not, you know, I say someone who hasn't got vitiligo, yeah. I obviously am not in your shoes, but should we be celebrating it? So but when young people are in the position you were in when you were 15 and you were 21 when you first saw the, the first marks, actually they think, well, this is great. This is who I am. A hundred percent. I think there's a massive stigma around visible differences, including vitiligo as well. Is it being represented in the media you know, enough? Is it being educated about enough in schools? And I think you can even look back at TV shows and films and even see you know, people playing the villain, if you like, uh, being stigmatised because of their visible differences. D does the word cure worry you? We're talking um, about this miracle cure. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, cure, cure, I mean, the word cure, yes. I think with this particular cream, we don't know the side effects, how long it lasts, as such like that. Um, but I think it's all about personal choice if people find it as a cure for them, maybe some, a tool to help them be able to actually go outside in the mornings and, and live their life. JT, how, how did it make you feel when you, you heard that this, this cream was available and it, you know, it works? I have to say, I was, I was... But it might be available, actually, yeah. I have to say, I was, I was really overwhelmed by hearing this because at age 21, I was soul-searching for so many different treatments for something that would be my quick fix. And I think the really important message that I want to share today is that whilst this is in, you know, in process of being approved by the NHS, we have to be very mindful of the fact there are long-term effects um, and side effects with this drug. And, you know, 
when I was 21, I wanted that quick fix. And there are many people out there who will want that uh, quick fix as well. So it's important to research, speak to your GP. If anyone's considering it, speak to your dermatologist, reach out to the Vitiligo Society and just make sure you make those informed choices. In principle, though, when you were younger, you would have, this would have been... I wouldn't have thought change. twice about long-term effects. I was so desperate to, to cure it. I would have gone straight ahead. Uh, so, Shankar, you're happy, you know, that moment, that day when you went into work and you didn't have your makeup and it sort of changed your yeah. life. Of course, you're, ha you're happy with having vitiligo. There are many young people who, who won't be. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see that th this is actually, this could be a really much needed break for someone who has vitiligo, who's young, who thinks, I, mm -hmm. I want to use that cream? I think you're right. I think potentially it can be like a game changer. It's about identity. It's about being comfortable in your own skin. And most of all, it's, it's important that people know that there's a, there's a choice now that wasn't there before. I think what's also bringing in the focus, for example, Charity Changing Faces did a study and found that one in five people identify in the UK with having a visible difference. Now, if you think about that from a mental health point of view, I think more could be done around when you first get diagnosed with a visible difference like vitiligo, around the, the support that is needed for those people who are just getting diagnosed with vitiligo to date. Shankar Jyoti, thank you very much for, for joining us thanks on so Morning Live.